Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to add a background image to your Squarespace website. We have two different techniques that we're going to use, so I'll go ahead and share my screen to teach you exactly how to set this up in Squarespace. Here we are inside Squarespace, and I do want to mention this tutorial is specific for version 7.1, the latest version of Squarespace. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a background image to a page section, and then I'll teach you how to add a background image to the entire website, both the header and footer included. First, we'll hop into edit mode, and I'm going to edit this page section. <clears throat> I'm going to add a background image to this individual page section. Here, we'll select edit section, click on background, and you can upload an image. If you click this plus sign, you can upload one from your computer, select one from your asset library, or browse stock images. After you've added your background image, Squarespace is going to load this image, and I've got one more thing to teach you before we add a background to the entire page. All right, we have our image right here, and this part is super important, this circle. This is the focal point of the image that will be the center of the screen. If I want it to be further down the image, I just need to move that circle. If I want the focal point higher on the image, I place it up here, and you can see this image shifting in the background as I move the focal point. This is incredibly important for mobile devices because this will be the focal point on mobile as well. If we click over here to the mobile view, this is what the background image will look like. If we select Edit Section, click on Background, and maybe move this focal point over to the side, left or right, you can see the image shift. And again, we can move it down or up, and you'll see the image shift. So pay close attention to where that focal point is specifically for the mobile view of your website. Now, it's kind of difficult to read the text on top of this image, so I'll go ahead and select Edit Section again. And here in the background, we can create different effects and also change the opacity or level of transparency for the overlay. Based on your color theme, you'll see what background image is being used for that section. In this example, it's the light gray. This color theme right here is actually a light blue. The background for this color theme is a solid white. Whatever you select for your color theme will have implications for your background overlay. Now, if you don't want any color on top of the image, pull this slider all the way over to the left so overlay opacity is set to zero. Otherwise, drag it to the right until that background color is the right level of transparency so you can see the text on top of the content but still see the background color. And again, we reached all of this by selecting Edit Section, Background, and uploading an image here. Now, next on our to-do list was to create a background for the entire site, every single page, and the header, and the footer. To do that, we need this custom code right here, and we also need to make some changes to the header of our website. I'll select Edit Site Header and Edit Design. Under the Color option here, you'll see another Opacity slider. I want you to pull this all the way over to the left. This will make your back will make the background of the header transparent so we'll be able to see the image behind it. We haven't added the image yet, so that's why it still looks the same. Now let's scroll down and one more time we're going to get this code here. I'm just going to copy this on my keyboard. This is listed in the description below, but let me teach you how to use it. Scrolling back up to the top, we'll select save. We'll select exit, and I'm going to navigate to website and then website tools under utilities. Here, you'll see custom CSS. That's where we're going to paste this code. I'm going to paste the code and nothing happens except the background for all of the page sections disappear. Now, we do need to update part of this code, this part that says URL here. We need to replace that with the URL of the image we want to use for our background. Here in my custom files, at the very top of my CSS panel is where I want to upload that image that will save the image file with the rest of the content for my site. So clicking this drop down, you can click the plus sign or drag and drop an image here. I've already uploaded one from Unsplash, this image of sunflowers. We'll click on this image and clicking back here. I want to make sure we remove our filler text for URL here. There we go. So it says background image, URL, and then the actual image URL in parentheses. Now we have the sunflowers, but this next line of code is super important. This next line says background size contain, and I'll show you what that code means. Here, if we scroll down, you'll see the sunflower image is going to repeat itself. We're getting a repeating sunflower. It's covered up by the page section background that we added, so don't worry too much about that part. But scrolling down here, you'll see the sunflower repeating all the way down to the foot of our website. Contain will stretch the image to full width, but it will have it repeat itself over and over to fit the height of the page. If we change this to cover, 
we're going to get that image stretching all the way to the right and all the way to the bottom of the page. Even when we go full width, we'll see the image shift a little bit so the sunflowers are really zoomed in. Now let me show you what happens as we use background size cover. Again, it's going to stretch the image without changing its ratio or proportion so it covers the entire page. I'm going to select Save on our custom CSS, and I'll select Edit, and I want you to pay close attention here. Do you see how we can see two sunflowers on the bottom and a little bit of a sunflower on the right-hand side there? If I remove this page section, the height of the page will change, and so will the way the content is displayed. That's going to reduce the size of the image because it doesn't have to be stretched as tall. So if you want to change some of the size of content on your site, like maybe we'll make this page section a little smaller here, we can see the image change with it because the image is stretched to cover the page no matter how big the page is. We'll go ahead and select Save and Exit, and I'll show you what Contain looks like if we say Background Size Contain. Again, the image will stretch to be full width even when we make the page wider, but you'll see this image repeating itself vertically to make sure it covers the content of the page. So if you want to add a page... So if you want an image that covers the entire page behind the header and behind the footer of your website. You can use background size contain or background size cover in this specific code. And if you want to use just the background image for a section, select edit, select edit section, background, and upload the image here. Before we call this tutorial a wrap, I'll select save and exit, and I'll show you how you can add this code to a single page. Maybe you don't want this image of sunflowers on every single page on your website. We'll go ahead and cut this code out of our custom CSS and select save. Okay, now that the code is gone, let's go back to our main menu here and let's add a general page. Let's click this plus sign and add a pre-made layout. How about we go for uh, this design right here? I'll click on this layout. It's going to upload the page to our site here. So now it's in the not linked section. Let's click on it. So we're visiting this page. And when I select this gear icon and I click on advanced, this is where I can add the code so it only affects this individual page. I'm going to zoom in on the code here because I want you to pay close attention. We're going to say left caret, style, right caret. In your page header code injection, you can have all different types of code. And we have to tell the computer, this is a style code by literally saying style. Now, Squarespace should automatically type the end of the code for you. If it doesn't, make sure it says that as well. We'll put that on a new line. And our custom CSS, I'm going to paste right here between these two style brackets. So right here. Now, this is what the code says. It says, here's a style code. Take the wrapper of the entire website and give it this image for a background. Then I set it to background size contain. That means it's going to stretch the image to fit the width of the page, but it will repeat it as many times as necessary to cover the entire page all the way to the bottom. Then I said, anytime you see a page section border or a solid background, make sure that color is transparent. Okay, I'm done with my style code. That's line number five. All right, let's select save. The page will refresh. And now we can see the sunflower image repeating itself as often as it needs to, to cover the entire page through the header and the footer of our website. This page has a background image to it. That's why we're not seeing the sunflower there, but all the other content is on top of that background. Now, one more time, clicking this gear icon, we've added this code to our advanced. You can change the word contain to cover, and it's going to stretch the image to be full height and not repeat itself, but it will still keep the image proportion. So the sunflowers are going to be a lot bigger. Let's select save and take a look at this. We're getting a lot of yellow scrolling all the way down to the bottom. There are the sunflowers at the end. Let's go ahead and hop into edit mode and we'll remove this page section background so we can really see it all. We'll select background, we'll remove it, and now we can see just how big those sunflowers got for this particular page when we used background size cover. We'll select save and exit. And just a reminder, for an individual page, click the gear icon for the page and add it to advanced between these style brackets. Otherwise, take this entire custom CSS code, and if you want it on every page of your website, select website tools, custom CSS and paste the code right here and you'll have the same effect on every single page. Underneath this video, you'll find the codes that we use to create that background image that took up the whole page on our Squarespace website, even behind the header and the footer. Just make sure you select background size cover or background size contain, depending upon how you want your image to be displayed. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.
Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.